As promised, today we are back with a bit of shoebox forward action and what we're going to do is remove the engine from here and we're going to take it back and we're going to stick it in the engine bay of the shoebox. So in order to do that, I've got to get it off the engine stand that it's been sitting on since forever. So I'm going to remove some of these ancillaries here. I'm going to uh, take the carburetor off and fit a lifting plate so i've got a lifting plate from summit racing that's rated to about 450 kilos which should be enough to lift that so let's just disconnect the pcv valve hose from one or other end let's try and take it off there there we go that will do and we'll see what's holding the carburetor down nothing there we go and we can then look to fit the lifting plate so I'll just stash the car somewhere handy bucket that will do and there we go so we've got a place for that to fit I will tighten all of these down obviously before I lift it but that should give us, excuse my uh, bad organisation here, in fact you know what I'll do is I'll do that without the card spacer on there. So it's got a phenolic spacer on it. Which I will just work off. Again, back into the handy bucket. That's a uh, another seal for the back of it, so I'll leave that there. Okay, so that's clearly not going to fit with that there. So I'm going to have to just quickly remove, oh, you know what, well, that was nice and not tight, that water gallery plug. So let's try again. I'll just finger tighten these studs for the moment. They were obviously loose where I was test fitting the phenolic spacer. Now, I haven't really touched this engine in God knows how long, so I honestly couldn't really remember what I was doing with it the last time. And I uh, evidently need to find one more nut those aren't really even the ideal nuts for doing this and that needs a bigger washer on it so I'm going to head off and find some better nuts for that so that I can actually get that mounted correctly um, and then I'll be able to use that to lift the engine that's it's it's good being that it's that low because I will then be able to get the nose of the jib probably about there which means that the height of the block should slide nicely into the car that I'm going to be using to uh, move it without too much problem um, I will have to just ensure 
that all of the bolts for the intake manifold are tight before I lift it because the last thing I want to do is rip the manifold off but we'll tackle that once I have done the next stage which is actually to disappear off to my mate's gaff and pick up the engine hoist as we have a car club engine hoist that's basically lent out to um, whichever of the club brothers need it at any time and this time it's me so I'll go and get that then I'll finish this job we'll sling it in the car we'll take it over the shoebox and we'll see how the whole thing fits quick confession before we do go on a road trip because honesty is the best policy um, turns out being the idiot that I am or the Brit that I am I was putting on half inch fine pitch nuts onto half inch coarse pitch studs which was clearly never going to work but it's been a long week and my brain switched off so what I've done is just changed my plan ever so slightly and instead I've just put in um, half inch coarse pitch bolts in there which at the very least means the thing is going to go together when I put those studs back in to hold the carb on I'm going to have to pick up some half inch fine pitch bolts uh, sorry some half inch fine pitch nuts and remember that I'm dealing with yank hardware not Italian German or European so yeah a little bit of a dumb ass moment there so big shout out to Kieran with an O for um, allowing us to pass around his engine hoist like the village bike and uh, Sam's dad for uh, letting me come and pick it up from his house and allowing me to explore some absolutely wonderful Essex countryside so I will see if I can get some of the lovely Essex countryside out on village out on village out on video okay so we've got the hoist out and now it's just a case of mating it up over here um, I'm gonna have to just try and do this a little bit off camera or maybe just drop that a tad and then we can hook that in there it's set to its lightest or rather it's um, yeah set to its lightest lifting load because the uh, the beam is fully out I might be able to get away actually moving that in a bit because I suspect the distance between there and there I should be able to get it under the car so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust this move it slightly back it, it does actually lift more than a quarter of a ton even on that um, full extension but we'll pull it back a little bit and then we'll get it up in the air yeah it's a bit difficult to film that one-handed so uh, I've now got it on the hoist and then the fun and games begins of jiggling it across here spinning it around getting it in the boot of there happy days there you go a little bit of jiggling and uh, that's a way to load up your car isn't it nice four litre V8 sitting in the boot so the loading bay in a big old Swedish XC60 isn't too bad actually look we've got the uh, the hoist in there we've got a Y block Ford we've got all the clutch and the pressure plate and everything else that is needed to eventually actually fit the thing in and the bell housing and whatnot so uh, yeah you could almost fit a person in there as well it's not too sad so I'm gonna take a run across town because the car is not in the same location as the edging the engine at my house the car is somewhere else undisclosed location secret secret um, and when we get there we'll try and drop it in now despite having done this for a couple of years I uh, have forgotten my tripod once again so um, this is all going to be shot by hand and therefore utterly utterly terrible but it's been two years almost since this has had the cover off so let's see how much of it's actually survived so 54 mercury grill oh it's got a bit of bit of rust here and there but 
that's not too bad. A few spiders, but unlike you Yankees, these are not actually going to kill me. They just look most unpleasant. Oh, some lovely cracked filler there. That will need doing. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why you don't leave a car cover on a car for two years in and out of the rain because it just traps all the moisture and it will ruin it. But bearing in mind, this was pretty ruined before we started. It doesn't really matter. There you go, it's inside the shop. It's all still there. Um, so, that's looking all right. I'm gonna to have to lift the bonnet off because it doesn't have any stays or anything on it at the minute. But I'll lift the bonnet off and then we'll be able to try and line up getting the engine back in. There was a small moment of fear there where I realized the bonnet had actually latched itself and I couldn't remember whether the cable was still connected inside. Luckily enough it was. Now, obviously this is not finished in here. Um, these holes are gonna be filled. Uh, we're running no original heater. I'm gonna sort out a heater at some point later on. Gonna extend these back with filler pieces to about there and the same on the other side, just to tidy it up. We'll get rid of that because the battery's going to go to the boot and there is um, obviously there's going to be a radiator and a different mount there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump in and stick a transmission jack under here just to take some of the pressure off where it might the engine might end up sitting on the steering rack because obviously it's not mounted to the three speed and I have no intention of mounting it to the three speed yet. I will basically just balance it on the cross member for today, really, so I can get it out of the way, get it out of there and into here. But it's gonna make the rest of the engine bay look really, really crap. Yeah, that moment we're doing a non-removable one-piece front clip really doesn't seem such a clever idea. It seems I've got to get it really high to get it in. Mm. Well, it's all about the angle of the dangle, isn't it? But it's not quite there yet. But we don't seem to have hit anything. Oh, other than the, uh, the throttle mechanism there. It looks like we're going in okay. Possibly with just a little wedge of wood underneath there. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a a twist and a drop and we'll see where we're at. So for those of you wanting to fit a Y block into a shoebox this is probably the most interesting bit for you. Now it doesn't have any engine mounts at the moment so it is sitting right on the cross member just kind of balanced on the sump there. Obviously I don't want to leave it there for too long um, but the load is spread pretty well. Uh, you can see with a spin-on oil filter adapter and a slimline kit car sort of oil filter. We've got clearance to the steering box. Again, it's not in quite the right position with regards going back to the firewall because it has no bell housing on it, but it gives you an idea that, I mean, that, if anything, is gonna move slightly further back and give you more clearance. I've got a set of ram's horn headers, which again, I haven't actually fitted yet, but, or rather I fit them, but not in here. They look like they're gonna clear that. We're gonna have a little bit of issue trying to get the pipe down there, but I'm sure we'll manage it. Using a truck front mount, I should be able to make use of these original mounts. Again, the engine's going to be going back towards the firewall a little bit to give us more clearance for the radiator, because at the moment, there looks like if we put a radiator in here, there's not a huge amount of clearance for a fan, but we should be good. Likewise, mounting of the alternator. 
which I do have in there. Looks like we're golden for space. If we come down here, it's going to mount right there and sit nicely. Again, we've got the uh, modified truck uh, dipstick and a lot of space down there. And if we drop underneath the car, you can see with the modified rear pan sump that we've got clearance for the steering and it sits on the cross member there so we've got all the right stuff in all the right places and even with the engine sitting so low there is just about clearance for the oil pump again obviously the engine's going to go up by probably about an inch or thereabouts when the mounts are finalized so again all we're going to be doing is buying ourselves more space so although it's a little bit dusty from the garage that it came in if I do say so myself that is looking pretty sick so if you want to see a little bit more work on this as the time goes on please give us a like please give us a follow and subscribe